First of all, I've worked with the Ombudsman's Office for an extended period of time to verify things with Mr. Leah's comments. Mr. Leah now turning his back on me, as he's continued to do. Right now, you cannot provide heat for the entirety of your portfolio. That is a fact that Mr. Leah is, is aware of right now. When we're talking about call center numbers, let's remember when we come to the winter time, people are expected to be on the line for 20 minutes sometimes to get through to simply report that they have no heat. Now, I'm verifying this with the Ombudsman's Office. This information is verifiable to you. There's approximately $20 million dedicated to heat. Mr. Lee is telling me he can't do reasonable repairs on that basis. But people are phoning in over and over again to say that they have no heat. Mr. Lee is telling me that the same call center we talked about with issues with the call center, that those individuals are prioritizing by probing questions as to who gets heat. In the city of Toronto, in the country of Canada, 4% of the percent of the population living in these buildings, we have a new category now, a new word, precarious heating. Many of these people have no ability to take any further action to go to the landlord, tenant, or to have maintenance issues raised. We do not have the time. I'm self-employed. I'm a senior. I'm in my later years of working. I can come here and make a deputation. Most of us can. Please have some open meetings where we can all attend and speak. I'm sure you'll do that. But please address the fact that Mr. Leah knows right now that our portfolio will not have any heat in the entirety of that portfolio, there will be people going without heat with full knowledge this winter. Luckily, we had a nice winter last winter. But I can tell you, I've had two five-day periods without heat. But here's the thing. The reason why I didn't have heat is not because Mr. Leah didn't have money to spend to make the boiler work. It's because the staff member didn't bother to put water in the boiler on the Thursday of the long weekend of Easter weekend, for example. Now, I should mention also that the windows, the storm windows were all taken off our building in the beginning of December of that heating system for a heritage restoration and weren't restored till, Je till July. So no storm windows, five days without heat. And the reason is, staff member Thursday afternoon didn't bother to put water in the boiler. We're phoning, but find out Tuesday, nobody has ever even been sent out to this because this person works, this person has English as a second language problem, this person doesn't like to talk to the call center. So I'm phoning in and saying, whole building, whole building, please, can we have heat? And nobody is sent out, period. Your obligation as a landlord is not social engineering, not to enrich yourself and your staff, not to have legacy do-nothing jobs, it's to provide heat. You know right now you can't do it. If Mr. Leo wants to disagree with anything I say, please do so. No? Okay. Let's go on here. I see my good friend, Mr. Abraham. Mr. Abraham told me five years ago that your notices of entry are illegal. Let's say what that means. It's part of the psychological conditioning to tell tenants, as our contractors tell us all the time, you're second class. You don't own your home like I do. You only rent your home. So we can go into your home anytime we want. Your home is our, just like in a prison or a mental institution, we can go into your home anytime we want. Mr. Abraham, you know the notice of entry is illegal. Why are you still using it for five years? Is it purely a psychological conditioning tool to make sure the tenants know that they are second class? I see you spending, I could go on and on here. I'm going to try to make it short. Mr. Leah was dragged down to see the misspending on a restoration job where on either end there was extreme waste. I see Mr. Slayman spent $8,000 for windows that were never used. That cannot continue. Please deliver at the front line and let the $11,000 letter to Mr. Law for when you couldn't type or spell to get rid of Gene Jones. I'm sorry. Don't spend that money next to uh, board of directors, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. If, if I could just say that, uh, as I mentioned earlier in my short time here, I really value the input I received from tenants. Uh, the issues that you have raised, I have not been aware of, but I will undertake to talk to our team about that, so I do thank you for the input. Please speak also to the Ombudsman's Office, who have verified this information, if you want to hear it from beyond me. Kathy, thank you so much, and I welcome, I hope we're going to work together in the future. Thank, thank you.